Global Brand Partners is a Singapore and U.S.-based global footwear and apparel licensee of Beachbody, a $1.4 billion company, also owner of Gear Up, Coral, and Crossbin brands. Now, it's one of the fastest growing companies in the footwear and apparel industry and has won numerous design commendations in the global fitness industry. And with me is the CEO, Kalik Dada, um, to explain more about this and welcome. And let's start with Beachbody because that's um, one of the biggest fitness brands in the world, right? Tell me a little bit about that brand. Yes, um, they are a uh, high Jane and uh, um, a good morning to you in New York. Um, and um, I'm coming to you from Singapore, and uh, I just, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it was a, um, uh, you know, great uh, sort of, um, it was wonderful to meet up with Beachbody. I met with them, and I recognized that uh, they were a leading fitness brand um, in the sense that they create uh, content, and they create programs for people to get fit, and then they have the nutritional products to back it up in, in products such as Shakeology, uh, which are uh, which is like a protein shake drink. So they have the fitness programs and they have the nutrition. And so when I met with the owner, I'm asked, I, I, I sort of um, inquired why he didn't have the soft goods to go with it, which is the apparel and footwear which would sort of tie it all, to, to all together. And, um, and that's when, um, you know, uh, it was something that, that uh, um, you know, made sense for us to do uh, with them. And so that's the global license for footwear and apparel. And so you've introduced the technology. There's a streaming element to Beachbody as well, in addition to the apparel and the fitness shakes. Right. That part is actually done by the licensor. Okay. We, we, are, uh, we are completely in the sales of footwear and apparel worldwide uh, and building that uh, uh, like uh, um, and accessories, building that with our wholesale and, and, and marketplaces and e-com and uh, on retail. Yeah. So let's talk about the pandemic since you've introduced it. I mean, how did you navigate that? Did you digitally, did you shift that way? And then what about the resulting supply chains issues that have happened as a result of the pandemic? Yeah, uh, I think we, we had to, like most companies, had to pivot from a wholesale model, a brick and mortar, uh, going into brick and mortar, uh, uh, you know, wholesale, um, a traditional business that was. Uh, and we had to pivot away into a um, uh, into uh, going direct and uh, and and so and the digital uh, digital area of the business because we actually absolutely had no other op um, option um, and we had to basically uh, slow down our wholesale business uh, to uh, to third party retailers uh, traditional retailers that you're used to um, for example. Um, uh, other than Beachbody, we also have acquired Coral, the brand Coral, which is in Bloomingdale's, Neiman Sachs, and in the UK, say Harrods and Harvey Nichols and Selfridges and uh, Fra Gallery Lafayette, all the best department stores in the world. But those all struggle during the COVID pandemic. Yeah. So we had to pivot, all our businesses pivoted to the digital and uh, direct to consumer uh, business. Um, and now, you know, some normalcy is beginning to set in, so we can we can do both, okay. and we can have really a true omni-channel uh, business where we've got wholesale, we got sales through marketplaces, and then we've got our own e-com, and now we are uh, uh, starting our own retail. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. So, I mean, you've kind of embraced that digital and kept that as part of your business. Um, that happened during the pandemic, but you've kept on to that, and that's like a viable part of the industry now. Right, right, right. And the supply chain part, um, uh, you know, Jane, it didn't really, uh, it didn't really impact us any more than anybody else um, uh, in any way. You know, we were we are pretty diversified in our manufacturing. We've got manufacturing in um, the U.S. We are manufacturing in China. 
Vietnam, um, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Malaysia. So we were, we have a pretty diverse sourcing, um, um, uh, you know, so we, we weren't really, uh, if we were impacted to the extent everybody has been, but no more, no less, I guess, than anybody else. So um, we've all sort of come out of it and now it's, um, uh, it's, a, it's playing catch up right now. Well, and I think the lesson learned there is diversify your manufacturing geographically so you can. I, I think so. I think that is a, a critical aspect um, in, in our industry that's very, very important. I think COVID actually showed uh, 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 that, you know, it, but even I think COVID did impact nearly the whole world. Yeah. So however diverse your sourcing strategy was, you would probably be impacted uh, one way or the other. Kilik, thank you so much. Very interesting to hear about global brands and some of the fitness trends that we're seeing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jane, and uh, very wonderful to meet you. You too. Look forward to seeing you in Singapore or New York. Yes, we'll make that happen. Thanks. Thank you.